Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Eternal Rock of Ages, we bless you. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Daddy, we bless your holy name. We thank you. Lord, you are the ancient of days. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the lily of the valley and the balm of Gilead. Baba, we bless you. Worship your holy name. Daddy, we thank you, Lord, as about to go into your word this evening. Lord, speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, what we need to know so that we can overcome satanic counterattack. Lord, teach us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, teach us your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we pray tonight, as we minister tonight, any man or woman, anyone under the sound of my voice, that they are carrying the arrows of evil attacks on their body. Lord, let, let the arrow jump out in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, anyone that has become victim of spiritual attacks, let the attacks be terminated tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Beloved, you're welcome in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. This evening, we are looking at our lecture 15 of our standing in the GAP online course. After this to tonight's teaching, we have just three more to round up the whole thing. The Lord has been with us, and we we'll finish well in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Intercession and counterattack. Intercession and counterattack. Intercession is warfare. And in every warfare, there is confrontation. Intercession, when you decide to engage in intercession, when you decide to pray, to stand in the gap for your family, for your friends, for the church, for your loved one, you are engaging in spiritual warfare. And in every warfare, there is confrontation. In every warfare, there are two parties from two sides, and there is confrontation, and there will be battles, and there will be attack. I pray for you by the power in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not become victim of spiritual battles in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not become casualty of spiritual warfare in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil has not changed. His agenda has not changed. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10 that the devil come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 2,000 years after, the devil's plan has not changed. The devil is still following his agenda. He's still following through his plan. His plans to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we have been called. The reason why you were not taken to heaven the moment you got saved. The reason why you were not taken to go and enjoy in the, in the beauty of heaven when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. The reason why you are still alive is that you are God's messenger. You are God's ambassador of light, of restoration, of deliverance on earth. The reason why God kept you on this earth is for you to fulfill, to carry out, to propagate the agenda of God for mankind. I pray for you, you will not fail God in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, in spiritual warfare, what you cannot confront, you cannot conquer. What you refuse to confront, you cannot have authority or no power over. The devil is still continuing his agenda. God's agenda is also still being propagated by you and I. Therefore, once you decide to enroll in intercession, the moment you decide to intercede, you have already enrolled into a spiritual battle. I pray for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. God Almighty will strengthen you to overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. As you attack the stronghold of Satan in your home, in your family, in your community, in your city and the nation, the devil will send his emissaries, his messengers also 
to counterattack. Therefore, I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every attack, satanic attack over your life, your marriage, your business, your finance, your career, let it be terminated today in the mighty name of Jesus. Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 27. Luke chapter 8, verse 22. The gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 8, from verse 22. Luke chapter 8. Verse 22. Praise the living Jesus. I read Luke chapter 8, verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that when he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Verse 23. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filling up with water and were in jeopardy. Verse 24. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Tisha, Tisha, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wonder, saying, One to another, What manner of man is this? For he commands even the winds and the water. And they obey him. Verse 26, the last one. And they arrive at the country of the Gadarene, which is opposite Galilee. Praise the living Jesus. By the other side, there was a man who needed deliverance. By the other side of the river, there was a man that was destined to be a great evangelist, whom the devil had tied down to the grave. By the other side of the river, there was a man that in his destiny, when he was living in heaven, his destiny to be an evangelist to four cities. Yet, the devil buried him, his glory, his destiny, his ministry, by the burial ground. I pray for you today by the power in the mighty name of Jesus. As the word of God come to you, you are being delivered to fulfill your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. You are being delivered to fulfill the purpose of God for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Then we ask ourselves a question. Why did a storm arose the moment Jesus wanted to cross to the other side? Why did the devil rage when Jesus decided to cross to the other side? Why was the purpose of this storm in the first place? The storm came because by the, at the other side of the river, there was a man who needed deliverance. The storm came to Jesus and his disciples because there was a madman that was 4,000 demons had made his home, his body, their homes, their habitation. Jesus was out to deliver him. The storm came because by the other side, at the other side, there was a man that needed healing. There are many of us today. There are many men and women of God today. They are facing storms of the enemy. They are facing storms in their marriages. They are facing storms in their career. They are facing storms in their businesses. They are facing storms in their ministry. They are facing storms in their health. They are facing storms in all around their lives. They are facing storms in their homes, in their marriages, in their family. Why? Because they are out to deliver, to rescue somebody who is about to perish. The madman by the other side. He was one who needed deliverance. And because Jesus attempted to go to the other side, because the disciple attempted to go to the other side, the enemy came with a raging storm. I pray for you tonight by the power in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of him who died and rose triumphantly on the cross on the third day. Every storm in your marriage, every storm in your ministry, every storm in your career, every storm in your head, every storm in your business, I command them to stop tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I silence every storm in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every raging storm in your life, let them be terminated today in the mighty name of Jesus. This man had potential, yet his potential was wasting away in the grave. He had a great potential to be a great evangelist to four cities. 
The Bible called it Decapolis. Yet this man was wasting. His glory was wasting away by the graveyard. I speak today as a servant of the Most High God. Let your glory in the grave. Let your glory in the graveyard. Let your glory in the cemetery. Wherever your glory has been buried, wherever your potential has been buried, let it begin to come out and locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. What is satanic counterattack? What is counterattack? Number one, counterattack is a deliberate assault by Satan and his devils and his demons to harm a person. Counterattack is a deliberate assault by Satan and his forces to harm a person. Meaning what they can harm the spirit, the body, and the soul. The devil, he brings this counterattack in order to harm a person, to harm the body, the spirit, and the soul. I pray for you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive awesome healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, what is counterattack? For counterattack is Satan defending his territories. Counterattack is Satan defending his territory. There are some territories Satan has claimed for himself. There are some places Satan claimed to be the owner of. And the Bible says the only place Satan has authority over is darkness. But there are some family, there are some lives, there are some homes, there are some marriages, there are some ministry, there are some locality that Satan is claiming ownership of. So when you decide to take him out of those places, he will try to defend it. And by defending it, he will launch a counterattack. I pray for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I terminate their counterattack in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, what is counterattack? Counterattack is to reverse the advantage gained during intercession and prayer. Counterattack is to reverse the advantages that have been gained during prayer and intercession. What does it mean? It means that when you pray, when you are interceding, you are gaining so many ground. You are recovering so many ground. You are restoring by recovering by what the enemy have taken. Therefore, in order to reverse the gains you have made, Satan launched a some counterattack. Number four, what is counterattack? It is to strike back. Counterattack is to strike back. Every time you engage in prayer, you are hitting the devil. You are hitting the devil. There will be a time that the devil also hit back. Whenever you are experiencing a counterattack, it means that your prayer is achieving major or, 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 or is, is effective. Whenever you are having counterattack, you pray and there is a counterattack, it means that your prayer is achieving the desired result. It's not a time for you to give up. Counterattack me that you have been attacking the devil and the devil sees you as a threat and is striking back. I pray for you today in the mighty name of Jesus that God Almighty will empower you. You shall be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. Number five, what is counterattack? It is the attempt by the devil to stop you from continuing your attack. Counterattack is an attempt by the devil to stop you from continuing on your attack. You have been attacking. You have been fighting. Now the devil is trying to stop you. The enemy is trying to stop you from continuing this attack. They will launch a counterattack. And many Christians, they have stopped attacking. Many Christians, they have stopped engaging in warfare. Many Christians, they have stopped fighting because of a counterattack. The agenda of Satan, of launching the counterattack, is to stop you from praying. Is to stop from doing the good things you are purposing in your heart to do. Therefore, when you are having an attack during the time of prayer, it is telling you that you are achieving a desired aim. It is time for you to continue. You shall be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. The greatest danger to your life, to your family, to your community, it is when you are the moment of victory. The greatest danger to your life, to your family, to your community, it is when you are the moment of victory. At the moment of victory is not when you give up. At the moment of victory, no when you give up. Elijah had gathered the prophet of Baal. And Elijah brought down the fire from God, from heaven. And Elijah slaughtered the prophet of Baal. The moment Elijah did that, Elijah was at the mountain of victory. 
That was the greatest ministration of Elijah. And right from there, he had a voice of, of Jezebel. And Elijah was depressed. For 40 days, Elijah ran into the wilderness because he was depressed. The greatest danger to your life, to your family, is when you are the moment of victory. Most time when we are the moment of victory, we relax, we become comfortable. That is when the devil strikes the most. I pray for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not remove your sword until you have slaughtered in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not remove your sword from that serpent. You will not remove your sword from that snake until you have cut off their head in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not remove your sword from that dragon that is attacking your marriage. You will not remove your sword from that dragon attacking your family your business, your career, for until you have removed the head of that snake, of that serpent in the mighty name of Jesus. You cannot afford to stop. Once you have laid your hand on the plow of intercession, you must not give up. You must keep on. Because whether you intercede or not, Satan will attack. Now that you have started to intercede, you have begun to intercede, you have to continue to do this. No matter the attack, because we have been promised that we shall have victory. You shall be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. When Satan attacks, he will use different weapons to attack you. When Satan is about to launch a counter-attack, he will use so many weapons to attack you. Let's mention them quickly before we round up. Number one, the first weapon that Satan will use in order to launch a counter-attack is to create the weapon of doubts. Doubts. You stop believing in yourself. You stop believing that the prayer after prayer and fasting, after you have interceded, you start doubting if your prayers is, will be answered. Number two, it is despair. You become hopeless. Number three is deception. Many have been deceived. The Bible says be careful because even the Satan, he can come as an angel of light. You need the gift of discernment for you to be able to discern light from darkness. Number four, the fourth weapon that the devil uses when he's launching a counterattack is the weapon of discouragement. The weapon of discouragement. The arrow of discouragement is just fired. You are supposed to pray for seven days. And after three days, arrow of discouragement is it entered into your body. And you stop, you give up. You stop praying. And the devil is happy. Why? Because the first three days of that prayer, you were launching a very big bomb, a massive attack on the kingdom of the throne of the stronghold of the enemy. And they fire the arrow of, of discouragement. And you give up. I pray for you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the strength to continue in the mighty name of Jesus. The fifth weapon that the enemy uses when he's launching a counter-attack is the weapon of delay. Is the weapon of delay. He will try to delay the answers to your prayer. This happened to Daniel. He will try to delay the answers to your prayer. So you want to give up. You stop that. begin to doubt the power of God. Number, set, number six. The sixth weapon that the devil use, uses when he's launching a counter-attack is the weapon of fear. Is the weapon of fear. Number seven is the weapon of division. Especially when you are praying with two or three more, or two or more people. The enemy fire the arrows of division and everyone cannot agree on one thing. Another weapon of the enemy when he's launching a counter-attack is the arrow of confusion. Is the arrow of confusion. Another of his weapons is the weapon of temptation. A lot of men and women today that were called into the ministry of intercession. But because of money, because of tight money, they have gone to start a church. They have gone to start ministry. Many have become apostles and prophets. And the ministry of intercession that God has called them into, they have abandoned it because of the temptation of money. The devil will tempt you. In order to deviate you, to divert you from your purpose, your agenda, your, your God-given assignments. Another weapon that the enemy uses to, when he's launching a counter-attack is the weapon of destruction. He will attempt to destroy your home. 
It will attempt to destroy marriages. It will attempt to destroy businesses. It will attempt to destroy finances. It will attempt to destroy health. But he has failed. Satan is a loser. Satan has failed over your life and over your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, I decree today every completed work of the enemy, every completed assignment of the enemy over your life, your family, your homes, your children, let it be reversed in the mighty name of Jesus. Because it is written, he said, there is no weapon that will be formed against you that shall prosper. Therefore, every weapon of the enemy that will be prospering against you from before, from today, let the weapons begin to fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Every tongue that are issuing curses, every tongue that are issuing incantation and spell against you and your family as a result of your intercession, let the tongue be silent by fire in the name of Jesus. As you intercede, God is with you. Daniel was interceding for the people of Israel and the angel of God was with him. The angel of God are with you. The angels of God are with you. You are not alone in your intercession. Don't be afraid. What must we do this evening? What must we do? When you are experiencing that the enemy has fired a counter-attack, what must you do so that you can overcome the satanic counter-attack? What must you do when the enemy launch a counter-attack? You can overcome and you can send the attack back to the sender. Number one, you need to maintain a relationship with God. You need to maintain a relationship with God. When the enemy has launched a counter-attack, the first thing you need to do, you need to maintain a relationship with God. Number two, you need to know your identity in Christ. You need to know your identity in Christ. Who are you? You are a child of the Most High God. A child of a lion is also a lion. He said, I've given unto you power and authority. God has given his, you his power. The power of Jesus is manifesting in you. It is time you begin to exercise it. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Paul was at, at the island of Martha in the book of Acts chapter 28. And a snake came, a viper came, and it beat Paul's arm. The same arm Paul uses to lay hand on the sick. And Paul shook it into the fire. He was not afraid. Don't be afraid. Well, I pray for you today. Every attack the enemy has launched against your life, your ministry, your marriage, your home, your business, your career. Let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Let it boomerang in the mighty name of Jesus. You must know your identity in Christ. Don't be afraid. You are a child of God. Number three, you must know the word of God and use it as a weapon. When the enemy is launching a counter-attack, you need to know the word of God and use the word of God as a weapon. The Bible said that when Satan came to tempt Jesus, Jesus used the word of God to overcome, to conquer him. It is written. Do you know what is written? Satan is not afraid of the Bible you put under your pillow to sleep. Satan is afraid of the Bible that comes out of your mouth. Satan is not afraid of the Bible you put under your pillow. Satan is not afraid of the pages of the Bible you have cut and you have put, you have swallowed. No, Satan is afraid of the word of God that is, being com that is coming out of your mouth. Know the word of God and begin to use it as a weapon. Number five, use the weapon of thanksgiving, praise and worship. Use the weapon of thanksgiving, praise and worship. Number six, be watchful. You need to be watchful. There are times that the enemy is, is preparing an attack. God will reveal to you. Before the enemy will launch an attack, God will reveal to you an attack is coming. Either through dreams or if you are, if, 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 if you are very good at hearing the voice of God, he will tell you when the enemy is about to launch a counter-attack. Therefore, you pray. I pray for somebody today. The Lord asked me to tell you that every attack of the enemy, attack to return you from grace to grass, let the attack backfire in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not go from grace to grass in the name of Jesus. You will not go from prosperity to poverty in the name of Jesus. You will not go from good health to sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. You must be watchful. Number, number seven, you must fast often. You must fast often. Take a day in a week to fast. 
I've said it before. It's not compulsory. You fast the whole day. You can break at 12 noon. You can break at 2 p.m. But make sure you are praying. Number eight, walk in love. You, need, you must walk in love. When you are not walking in love, there is no way you can overcome the attack of the enemy. Number nine, you forgive easily. Forgive quickly. Forgive quickly. The Bible says our weapon, our battles are not against flesh and blood. But they are against principalities and power. Therefore, forgive quickly. And the last thing you must do for you to overcome satanic counterattack, you must have faith. You must have faith. You must have faith. Praise the living Jesus. Before we go, something happened. Maybe this morning, you woke up with a dream. And in this dream, you are being attacked. In this dream, you are being pursued, maybe by an animal or by a man that is stronger than you. Maybe in a dream, you find yourself climbing a, a, a steepy hill. And then you woke up. And you woke up with fear. And you start crying. The devil is happy. But if after you've had a dream that is not pleasant, if after you've had a dream that is not so good, and then you woke up, you say, thank you, Lord, for reminding me of this dream. And then you go into prayer. You reverse, you revoke, you cancel, you abort. Everything that was done in that dream, the devil will be afraid. He will not come to launch a counterattack. The devil is a bully. The devil is a bully. Until you fight back, he will not stop attacking you. Every time the devil attacks and you wake up crying, shedding tears, complaining, asking God, where are you? Asking God, why have you abandoned me? The next day, Satan will still bring that affliction. Until you arise, Satan is a bully. And a bully until you confront them. They don't leave you alone. From tonight, receive the power to confront and to conquer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, those are the principles to overcome satanic counterattack. I pray for you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. As you use this principle, God will give you victories in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. God, let your power, your glory, and your fire, let it move into the lives of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, release and pour your anointing of overcomer over your children right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, move into the lives of this one and begin to dwell and take possession in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, because it is written, the Bible says, He that is in us is greater than they that are in the world. Therefore, the Holy Spirit that is inside of you, let him begin to empower you you to conquer, to overcome every spirit, every power, every demon coming from outside to attack you in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall be celebrated. You shall overcome. You are a conqueror in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the living Jesus. By the grace of God, we continue again on Monday, Tuesday, and finally this class, this course of studying the gap it will be finishing next week, Wednesday. Three more lectures to go. The Lord bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever and more. Amen. 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 One hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Shalom. <laughs>